Hi, this is Pam Smith with Farm Journal Magazine. I'm here with Rob Fraley from Monsanto. And Rob, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about the pipeline, and, and you've got a lot of exciting things coming. But first, I heard you talking about when you went off to college. What was it like in 1970? Well, you know, a couple of things I always use that 70 reference point on. So, you know, I left my dad's farm in 70. And in central Illinois, that year, he had his first 100 bushel corn yield. And, uh, you know, the national average was 75, so he was way ahead. But, you know, the, the important is there is, you know, that was the 1970s. I can still remember our four-row uh, four John Deere planter and uh, 100 bushel corn. You know, today the national average in corn is 150 uh, plus, and, you know, they're already talking about 160 bushel crop again this year. So we've seen almost a doubling or more in yield since the 70s. But what, what's so exciting about, you know, being here at this time in the, in the industry is when you, you look at all the advances that are going on in breeding. You know, in just the last five years, we've sequenced the soybean and the corn genome. We've put thousands of markers that let us tag the individual genes. You know, breeders have new tools to create new soybean varieties and new corn hybrids, more than they've ever had in the history of plant breeding. On the biotech front, I mean, we're launching our SmartStacks corn that has eight genes. You know, we're launching a brand new Roundup Ready to Yield, and pretty soon that's going to be stacked with a dicamba tolerance and another yield trait and become a triple stack in soybean. You know, we're seeing that benefit of new traits, both for bug and weed control, but now new genes that are going to protect against drought, improve nitrogen utilization and yield. And then on top of all that, you know, you look at all of the advances that are going on on the agronomic side from you know, seed treatments and, you know, variable planting densities and row configuration. You add to that all the in-crop fungicide treatments and in-crop fertilization. And, you know, we're basically changing at a very rapid way how corn and soybean crops perform from both the genetics, from a trait, and from an agronomic perspective. And when we pull all that together and look at the future, we think as an industry, and this is the big we, this is all the companies and all of the, the institutions and universities bringing that technology together on a farmer's you know, field, we believe that as we look to 2030, we'll be able to see a, again a doubling of corn yields, a doubling of soybean yields, you know, using all these new technologies. And that's so critical because it's that yield that in the end is what drives, you know, the productivity and the profitability of a grower, but it also has a tremendous impact as we think in the long term of meeting, you know, the challenges of a growing global population, increased demand for grain, for animal feed, and biofuels, and I think agriculture can make, you know, an incredible contribution, you know, to addressing, you know, food feed and energy security in the future. So that's a lot for one for a farmer to sort through. And do you have any advice for them as they go and try to pick, you know, they get a, one chance a year to put something in, out in that field? Well, you know, farmers are pretty good at bringing together a lot of different variables. But I always say, and I can remember from, uh, you know, when I grew up on my, uh, my dad's farm in central Illinois, of all the decisions that my dad, you know, spent time thinking about, you know, that seed decision was always the most important because, and especially today, when that seed not only is really driving, you know, yield and profitability, but that seed is determining, you know, which kinds of bug control, which kinds of weed control, and in the future, what types of water management and fertilization practices, that seed decision is a critical one. So I, I think it's really up to companies like ourselves in order to provide the kind of data, the kinds of analysis, and make the kind of recommendations so that all that technology can be used by growers, you know, with the right fertilization practices, at the right planting density, with the right row configuration, you know, on a given farm or field. So I think in many ways it's up to us to do that hard work make that data available so we can help the farmer, you know, utilize all this wonderful technology as efficiently and effectively as they can. All right. Thanks a lot, Ron.